What's up, y'all? This is Darius back with another video doing something different this time. We're going to do a interview. This trader, High Gamma, his alias for today, um, he has been with me since 2017. We had the crypto group me chat. Uh, shoot, nobody knew what we was doing. We were <laughs> the only few out of hundreds, bro, hundreds that actually had any sort of technical analysis. We we saw that bear bear market all the way down. I, I was doing options and then told him about options. He then took that to the next level and honestly has been a much better options trader than myself. But um, no no more intro from me. But here is High Gamma. Gamma, uh, thank you thank you for coming. I just want to say we really appreciate you for the interview. I'm hoping that my viewers can really learn from this. And just tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, yeah, thank you for having me. So just a little bit about myself. Um, went to school for computer science, uh, Georgia State University. So I've been kind of on the techie side for a while now. Uh, graduated in 2014 and pretty much started um, working in the software field as a developer. <clears throat> I've been doing that for the last five or six years. And uh, in between, I pretty much, you know, got into um, investing and, you know, real uh, small real estate things in between here and there. Um, you know, caught my primary property in maybe 2014 and uh, made some money off of that. And in turn, used that for a majority of my investments. Um, I would say we, you know, like you said before, we started out, you know, in the crypto space when everything was mooning and and going crazy, and you buy altcoin, and next thing you know, it's easily five, ten times, kind of like how it is now. Um, but then, you know, we got humbled, um, you know, during the twenty k crash initially. So you know, that was a good time, good lessons learned, you know, good money won, good money lost. You know, but we stayed in the game and kind of kept it moving forward. And, you know, so what I pretty much mainly deal with now is uh, options, stock options. I, I do some stocks here and there. I uh, try to usually play bigger on those plays, but try to get in and get out. And also, uh, I've been getting back into my crypto lately, but mainly focusing on uh, leverage trading. Thank you for that, Gamma. Uh, so I remember real quick on that 2017 drip, we had saw Ethereum, I think, break above a thousand and then people was buying that support at a thousand and get flushed, man. So I definitely remember it, it was some rough times back then and it actually kind of scarred me only in a good way from how I trade now. It's like I never want to see my account go down to zero or it, it get hit by a lot of big, big down moves. So I really think that we, we learned a lot from that. Don't you agree? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, man. Okay, cool. So it gave us the intro and the background. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your uh, trading style. Um, typically, there's a few different ways um, I like to do it. So uh, one way I like to try is kind of go in heavy with a tighter stop loss. So if I see some good price action, uh, maybe like a momentum candle come in or a you know, a top and tail or a bottom and tail that's a pretty big relative like to like the recent candles. I may go in bigger than usual in those positions, maybe with a tight stop loss, because that's one of those positions where I'm basically saying, hey, you know, I, I think it can burst from here. But if it doesn't, then I want to get right back out. So, you know, I probably try and go in with a much heavier size than usual, but have a tighter stop loss. So I'm still sticking with my standards. And, you know, I'll let that kind of see what it does. And usually I try to stay in those plays, um, you know, for a quick intraday trade or, you know, a swing trade for the day. Um, but I don't usually hold those type of plays overnight. But if I do hold them overnight, I would probably trim some of the risk that I have left over during the day. Um, so there's that. Um, the other thing I like to do is pretty much have a uh, position size stop loss which is basically, you know, if 1% of your account is $100 or 2% of your account is $200, you want to risk no more than that uh, at the moment. Um, so that's what I typically like to, you know, deal with for the most part because it kind of gives me a way to not have to, you know, like worry about stop losses and managing the trade. I kind of let it go as, 
as it's needed. Yeah, I definitely can see why you wouldn't have a stop loss on a, a option trade, just off the fact that out of crypto futures, bonds, stocks, options is the most lucrative, the most volatile asset. And, and putting that stop loss in, you can get wicked out, and, and you really still have a good good swing in that trade. It just so happens to have weird bid ask price action. I think market make, makers can see stops and like kind of this liquidate liquidate you for no reason. Like I'm really trying to get in this trade, still, and y'all trying to wick me out. Right. <laughs> uh, so 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 basically, again, so you're doing position stop loss. So just kind of explain that just a little deeper for for my followers. I have a lot of beginners and whatnot. Right. Yeah. So position size stop loss is basically, you know, you determine the max risk that you want to lose on a trade. So, you know, like I was saying, typically me from my trading style, I feel like one to five percent max is what you want to risk on any given trade of your account. So if you have a hundred dollars account five dollars is a five percent stop and one dollar is a one percent stop now you know of course with a smaller account it's much harder to kind of stick with this but once you get into a bigger size account let's say a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand you kind of want to manage your trades based on a percentage of your portfolio so no one trade will want to knock you out so typically what I do is maybe stick with around one to two percent and I'll place that position. I'll place that amount on a trade and then not add a manual stop loss in there. So maybe I'll eyeball it here and there. If I decide like, OK, this just isn't looking good, I may manually get out. But typically I'll put in what I want to risk and then not even look at the. Well, I'll of course, pay attention to the trade, but not watch it throughout the day to kind of see where it's going back and forth because I, I, I've already determined what I want to risk on that trade. And since I've already determined it and that's the amount that I put in the stock or stock option or crypto, then I don't have to be so hands-on on that trade. It's kind of like one of those set it and forget it um, positions. And then I think one of the main benefits of these is, for example, if you did something like that with, let's say, GameStop, how GameStop went recently or uh MVIS, uh i think microvision if you do those type of plays on stocks like that and you just kind of set it and forget it then you know you have a chance of getting exponential uh risk to reward on those those trades yeah man when i tell you i wish i would have hit those game stops when it was GameStop. okay so my mom-in-law she was like into stocks then i'm into stocks and we were having a conversation while that whole run up to 500 happened i personally was like oh don't touch it it's, it's already at 115 so we'll give updates on each other as far as the price price jumping 20 dollars an hour and talking about <laughs> options talk about options i know some out of the money options hit like like 20 times man. right 20 right times 30 times Folks was really millionaires off that play. And then Microvision came out of nowhere. I, I wish I saw that news because that happened like fairly recently. Like they had a big, big um, bullish candle. Mm -hmm. I, it didn't last, but still like that, that those moves can really make a difference and change your life. I do want to um, continue on to what you were saying in regards to uh, de-risking. And that just goes into the hedges. So hedging like what do you can you tell us a little bit about what is hedging how you hedge and and, and go from there uh, well pretty much hedging is where you pretty much have uh, exposure to both sides of a play so for example if you want to go uh, buy some calls or go long on apple and let's just say you have a bigger position or a bigger position than normal on apple and you feel like it's a good play, you know, everything meets your trading requirements, your trading plan <clears throat> is breaking out or, you know, whatever uh, conditions you have set for that. And, you, you know, you may want to put in a bigger size position, but if you don't want to necessarily use a stop loss, 
then typically you can kind of, let's say, buy some shorter expiration date puts or for a smaller size. So let's say you get a random red day, let's say Apple and everything else is down three and five percent, even though you have, let's say, I don't know, maybe twenty five hundred in calls. If you had maybe eight hundred or a thousand in puts, even though your calls would be tanking at least with the shorter term puts that you have, it can kind of de-risk on some of the losses that you had on your bigger size calls. And sometimes those positions can even save you from losing any money and actually turn into your main position. So like, for example, I mean, this is probably a while ago, um, but I can't remember the exact figures, but I remember I had a, a play that was maybe, let's say, I don't know, 2,500 in calls or 3,000 in calls, but um, I had maybe 1,500 or 1,800 in shorter term puts or something like that. And because it actually ended up being a big red day, even though I had a much bigger position size in the calls, since it accelerated to the downside so quickly because of the volatility, then I was able to pretty much make up my losses with the smaller size puts. And even that ended up becoming my main size position. I was still able to profit at the end of the day, even though that wasn't my main thesis. Mm. Wow, that's really good. Um, so when that happens, right, a big down uh, day on your calls, but you have your puts, are you trying to sell your